Wonderful. Uh, well, thank you guys for all joining us. Uh, I'm Nathan Hartman. I'm the DMA recruiter here at Franklin University. And Katie Lee's our special guest today. And it's wonderful. And we're so happy to have you. Thank you. Um, you know what? We'll just we'll get right in and uh, do a couple questions now. And then we'll open up the floor uh, for a little Q&A with you guys as well. Um, so, um, you know, mine will start uh, at the very beginning. This is a very good place to start. Um, That's what I hear, yeah. A childhood, like, did you always think you wanted to be uh, in the business of show business, or? I think I did, but I just didn't want to tell anybody because I grew up in L.A., and everybody in L.A. says they want to be a voice actor, so, you know, I figured my chances were as good as theirs, which weren't very good, so I decided I'll just keep that to myself, but I... I did love to, you know, listen and, and do voices, but I never, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't know what I would do, yeah. but I thought I did want to. What, do you, do you remember, I mean, as kids, we, we tend to mimic the things we see on television, things like that. Did you find yourself as a child even mimicking what you saw on television? Constantly. Mm -hmm. do, you, yeah. do you remember some of the? Yes, I remember imitating all the people on Laughing. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, Goldie Hawn and sock it to me. yeah, and Judy Carn I and mean, people you probably don't know, you know, sock it to me, sock it to me. That was like, yeah, I'd walk around and and I'd listen to people singing and try to sound like them, and especially the cartoons. At least, even if I wasn't imitating them, and that's something for people who do want to do voiceover, imitate anybody. That's okay because if you're not exactly impersonating them, that's good because then you're creating your own and every you know it says in the Bible there's nothing new under the sun and that's true so if you see a character that's kind of like something you've seen before it's okay for you to you know copy it in some way because it's not going to be exactly the same thing sure yeah I mean yeah. I'm reminded of like the old Hanna-Barbera cartoons where <laughs> half of those characters just sound like uh, big celebrities Jimmy Durante and <laughs> yeah exactly you know, they are mimicking that sort of style of, exactly. of voice work and it, it works it's still very fun to it's listen to yeah. Um, so, I mean, you live in Los Angeles. You, know, you, you don't know if you want to be in the business. What was, what was going to be the alternative if it wasn't voice acting? I was going to be a teacher or an executive secretary because I heard they made a lot of money and, and I liked office machines. So I like to type. <laughs> so I thought I would do that um, or be a teacher. And, uh, and then when I finally ended up studying broadcasting, I thought I might wanted to be an engineer until I graduated, which is why it's good to go to college, and I thought, there's no way I'm going to sit in a dark room for eight hours having people tell me what buttons to press. I don't think I could do that. So, yeah, but that's one of the other things I thought I might want to. I thought, well, if I'm not successful in voiceover, then I guess I'll be a producer. Yeah, and, and so you're, you're transitioning out of college, and you know, I've, several people in the audience will be experiencing this very soon. What was that process? I mean. Um, where, where, where did you go to college? Did you come back to Hollywood? Or were you in school in the LA area? And then how did you break in? How did you finally pass that huge, massive fortress wall that seems to be uh, Hollywood? That is a very good question. I feel like I still can't. I'm, I'm, I, I want to make Let's sure. Here, there. there. OK, is that better? Is that better? Um, it does seem like a huge, impenetrable fortress, but I think that it's a God thing. You just never know. Everybody has their own success story. And mine was, I grew up in L.A., I finally graduated college in San Francisco. I had done a little bit of voice work in San Francisco, enough to get my Screen Actors Guild card, mm -hmm. because I did a demo commercial that was to accompany a film strip that an ad agency made for Hawaiian Punch, and because it went with the film strip and film was under the Screen Actors Guild, I got Taft Hart laid into the Screen Actors Guild. So I had my Screen Actors Guild card. I graduated. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And some of the people at the uh, voiceover talent agencies in San Francisco said, you know, you have a really good voice, but it's really better for cartoons, and we don't do that in San Francisco. So. One of them gave me the name of, an, of a talent agency. I called the talent agency, and it just so happened the receptionist was on a break. The voiceover agent answered the phone, heard me, and said, come on down. I'd like to meet you. And I signed with them, and I was with them for 26 years. So I was like 22. I had no idea. I'd never interviewed with anybody. I had very little experience. I had a demo that I had made after the last session of a voiceover class that I happened to join. And I really learned on the job. I was very fortunate. There were only about 200 
uh, voice actors in LA at the time. I got to go to a recording session at Hanna Barbera, and Lucy Taylor, who played Pebbles, I, I met her, and I was so nervous because I thought, you know, I was your guys' age, and you know, we sound alike, and she's going to see me as competition. And she said, "Come on down. There's lots of work for everybody." And I thought, "Wow, okay, great. That made me feel very good." Yeah. So, I mean, what year are we talking about this? Point? We are talking 1981. 81. So, um, uh, one of the earliest credits on your IMDb, because I would not be a good interviewer if I didn't check the International Movie Database or the Internet Movie that Database. That sometimes isn't right. Which is, yeah, it seems to be. Um, but, as you just mentioned, um, you did do the voice of the Maharaja in Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. And, of course, um, was that one of your first, like, inroads, or where was that? I mean, that For was in ADR? the 80s. Uh, it career wise, even. Well, it must have been kind of soon after I, I was doing ADR for, uh, they, there's groups of people, they're called loop groups, and, and a few people who did those, I worked for them. And that particular job, and I, I don't know if I auditioned for it, I don't remember, <laughs> but um, I know it went through my agent. A lot of times looping doesn't go through the agency, but it went through the agent and um, I showed up, because I was familiar with a lot, so I know I had done it, enough ADR at that point. Mm -hmm. And we went on the lot, and I walked in, and it was a Spielberg movie, but it was just the engineer, Charlene, who I knew Charlene, and I said, okay, what are we doing? She says, I don't know. I go, is there a director? No, they didn't, he, they're in London. What do they want? Well, I'm not sure. Okay, and that's how that session went. And so, that's the movie business. Why? Well, because you know, there's a question when you're replacing somebody's voice. Is it because they don't like the voice? Is it because they don't like the performance? Yeah. What do they want different? Why are they? You know, sometimes, a lot of times, they'll just want you to match the voice exactly because for some reason there's ambient noise that the mic picked up, and this actor was from England or India or somewhere, and. They couldn't bring him in for post-production, so they had to hire somebody to redo his voice. Because just for the students to know, engineers like all the voices to be on separate tracks so they can mix it. So if the voice is married to some other sound, they want to isolate it. Yeah, and, and to clue in those probably, um, you know, those less movie nerd people, um, ADR is that redubbing of whatever they, I mean, they film and record on production, but it can get really garbled. If you've got wind machines, things of like that, and ADR uh, voice actors come in, and the actors from the you know the, the original movie or whatnot, and they redub. Uh, oh yes, some or most of the TV lines. stars have to come in all the time uh, of episodic shows and loop their own voices to their match their performances after it's already been shot. Uh, as an, I mean, as an actress, um, does the process of, I mean, how does that change knowing that you're either mimicking or you know redoing something that you already have that visual? And you're you're embodying a new voice into that. Does that does that change how you think about how you want to do it? Knowing like that there's already a character. It's, instead of an animated thing, it's like a oh because I'm yeah. yeah right. Because if you're doing animation, you're creating it from scratch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'll ask you know do you like the voice like that movie you saw where I redid that. And I did do all the voices except for Darkwing Duck, by the way. So like that Richie Rich scene, I was all three characters in that. Um, but in ADR, I, that, I said they liked her voice, but she thought her body language was really, you know, not very expressive. That was a challenge because they said, can you make her more expressive? So she's like sitting like this, talking, and her mouth is like, you know, and I'm trying to think, how can I perk her up without, and make it match the body? So there's voice matching and improving the performance. So, I mean, about this time in the 80s, we're looking at... Um, we're looking at Adventures in Odyssey is, mm -hmm. is starting up. When did you get involved? Um, I mean, before it was even called Adventures in Odyssey, it was Family Portraits. And were you part of Family Portraits? Or no. Was it right before you, even. No, yeah. I was actually on my way to Arcadia for a doctor's appointment, and I heard the Family Portraits on the radio. And I had become a Christian, like, within, it, like, probably two years from earlier, maybe. And it was on my heart. I wanted to do something, use my talents for God. And anyway, I, so I hear this family portraits, and I looked in the phone book. Those existed in booths a long time ago. And um, 
I, I, I looked at their address, I drove over there and I gave them my demo. I said, I heard your radio drama and I want to do that because I really loved radio drama and that's something that always interests me um, when I was growing up and everything else. Anyhow, so I said, I know who the actor is on that show and he knows me and we're professionals. And they said, okay, thanks. And, um, but about a year later, they created the part of Connie Kendall for me when they finally got it together to do Adventures in Odyssey. And I mean, obviously, your, your other work, we're talking Darkwing Duck and a lot of the, the, you know, those classic Disney cartoons, um, Gummy Bears, things like that. What is the, I mean, between... Do you know Gummy Bears, Bears was the first animated TV series Disney ever that. did? Yeah. I did not know I that. didn't know that either till this year. <laughs> okay. Um, so between you have your Disney cartoons and you have Adventures in Odyssey, and, and having that, um, you know that that relationship with Quest. What is that experience like in the sense of how you feel like your impact is opposed to being on a Saturday morning cartoon and Adventures in Odyssey? And, and which one do you think the impact on the audience? Or yeah, the, the audience. Like, what okay. do you what do you gain from uh, each separate one? Well, I mean, it's always a thrill to work with your role models and icons wherever we're working. So on those shows we got to work with some classic Bill Scott, June Ferre was on Gummy Bears. I mean who wouldn't want to do that? But working on Odyssey I feel like everybody who's listened to Odyssey is like part of my family and people I love and I've, I've gained so much more from being part of that show and through the people I've met through it than I have through any other thing I've ever done. And, I mean, there's legendary people at Paul. Uh, House oh House yeah, House Paul Winchell. Paul Winchell, and I mean, they, and you know, Will Ryan. Um, yeah, Will worked on that too. Yeah, and, and so you know, there's some legendary work even on Adventures in Odyssey. Absolutely. Oh, and, uh, oh, I oh, think I'm talking about Gummy Bears. Yeah, 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 yeah there's yeah, a big Bears. overlap. Everybody wants to work on Odyssey. By the way, we get the best actors on Odyssey. So now everybody wants to be on our show, <laughs> which is really cool. Uh, it, yeah, how big is, how tight knit is that voice actor group? I remember seeing some pictures of you at uh, Comic Con on a panel with Billy West, who's like one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, how how close knit is that that community in Hollywood? Pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Well, Cheryl Chase, who did Angelica's, my actual cousin, so I guess that. <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, it's really close. Really close. Um, yeah, but we're we're friends. It's and it was when it was smaller, like 200 people, we were a lot closer. Now it's pretty yeah. spread out, but. That's the best group of actors in Hollywood. That's awesome. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, quick thing, I mean, we're running a little low on time, but I'd like to um, bring up a question about, you've, you've also done some video game work. Mm -hmm. um, EverQuest, Silent Hill, uh, Grim Fandango, one of my personal favorites. That's one original. It's, it's one original. It's great. Video, yeah, thank um, you. Good old LucasArts. Um, what's that experience like, opposed to, I mean, you have way more dialogue opposed to just film and TV and radio. Well, the difference is when you do video games, you're usually by yourself. Uh, they don't bring a bunch of actors in together because you're not interacting. So you've just got like a, a, a spreadsheet, like a Excel. Your lines are printed out on an Excel sheet. You do one line two or three times, two or three, you know, just whoosh, go down and yeah, it can take a long time, but you're by yourself. Yeah, I mean, some scripts, especially nowadays, you know, there's 2,000 lines for a person. Um, just the different variations uh, that can go on. Yeah. Um, as a person of faith, um, how, how do you, I mean, I know there's a lot of people uh, in uh, perspectives and students already who are interested to eventually make that trek to Hollywood. And what sort of advice would you give a, you know, a, a Christ follower in going into a community? I remember my experience uh, there. Um, I felt, I was, I was surprised how accepting they actually were of me. Um, I didn't know if that's the same experience you felt. Or yeah, when I first got saved, I was really self-conscious. I thought, oh, the Hollywood's going to think I'm weird, and, and my Christian family's going to think I shouldn't be an actress. But there are a lot of Christians out there working. As a matter of fact, I just worked on Dynasty Warriors, and it turns out the director and the casting person are Christians. You don't know. We don't talk about it, but they're there. You're not alone. There's lots of support, and as far as going out to Hollywood, you know, that's where it is. You can do stuff from Indiana, but if you want to go to Paramount or go to work in a studio, you kind of have to be in L.A. to do that. And don't be afraid. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works, right? And glorify your Father who's in heaven. That's our job, right? Um, what, you know, I think we'll go one more question. We're looking at pretty quick time, aren't we? Five. Five minutes? Five. Um, and then she, she has a table, and so please ask your questions um, out there. We don't want to keep people that have to go to class and things of that nature as well. Um, but uh, one more question. You know, we have people in here that want to be voice artists 
and we have people in here who you know, will be directing ADR and things of that nature. Um, what sort of advice could you give these people on how to work best together? It's a very interesting relationship, a director and his voice talents. Yeah, when you find, well, I think when a director finds an actor who gets what they want, that's a beautiful thing. And when an actor finds a director who can express what they want, that's a wonder, and express it in like three words is really wonderful. Uh, the best people I work for can say, you know, it's kind of like, and you go, oh, yeah. They don't even have to say. Somehow you, you know them well enough. Or if, you know, when they can tell you, it, directors that spend so much time explaining what they want kind of stymie the experience of letting, let your actor give you two or three or four takes. Hire somebody who can give you two or three or four takes, first of all, and then let them do it because they might, you know, be able to give you what you want and you won't have to, you know, ask for it. Just like trust the process and allow the actors to interact with each other too so that they might find some chemistry that you didn't know. Like in Odyssey, we found a new actor and she and I hit it off so well and I had a feeling she was gonna be a bad guy and go to jail in the script and I said, please can she stay because Connie wants to be roommates with her. And, <laughs> and they said, okay, they rewrote the scripts and now we have Pennywise on the show Xander. because we're friends and Xander she's happy and I'm happy and <laughs> there you go. That's wonderful. Um, uh, you know, one more quick thought uh, before I wrap this up is um, voice actors out there, you know, are starting out or whatever, what is one tip, like one to get them through that starting gate um, to get into the industry? Is it looking in the mirror and finding voices in your head? What is the... What can you do to further or start your career at least? Read first? out loud. Read out loud. Read tongue twisters. Be able to enunciate. Record yourself reading out loud and listen back. And if you can't, you know, criticize yourself in a healthy way, find somebody who can. Get feedback. You know, practice. Imitate. Read. Pick up stuff and read it without studying it. Learn to be a good cold reader. Uh, if you don't know names of play, you know, listen to and be. This might sound weird, but listen to the radio, listen to the news, stay up on current events, because you never know if you're reading for, you know, a corporation or, or you know, something that's. You want to be knowledgeable. I'm eclectic, which helps in voiceover, because I never know what I'm going to be talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming. Thank it's. You. Uh, I wish we had more time. Uh, she has a table, and you are more than welcome uh, to chat with her and ask uh, any individual questions. And she's got some merch to look at. And I would say. And an email list. Yes, absolutely. I was about to say, sign up for her mailing list, and uh, you'll keep in touch with what she's up to. So thank you guys so much for coming, and have a wonderful day. Good job.